the product rule helps us differentiate when we have one expression times another expression. For instance, if we have the derivative of x squared times sine x. Now, one thing you absolutely cannot do, this needs to be said right up front, is you cannot simply differentiate the first expression times the derivative of the second expression. That's probably the most common mistake that we see when we ask students to differentiate products of, uh, of different, different terms. There's a rule that you have to follow. It's called the product rule. Um, this one's not filed under what we would call the basic derivative rules because it's not really a, an intuitive thing. It's not really something that we would just guess right off the right off the bat. But um, but anyways, here's the product rule. It says if you have one function times another one, for instance, x squared times sine x. We'll do this example in a second. Uh, what we do is we differentiate the first expression times just the original second expression. So notice no derivative. We differentiate the first term but not the second term. We multiply those. Plus the first term times the derivative of the second term. So we're only taking one derivative at a time and we're adding these together. So the way I would say this if I were working an example out is I would use the words the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's how I would say that in English. So let's work through a, a couple examples. Uh, the first one, we'll just, we'll just try this one right here. And uh, you have the function is x squared sine x. So we'll, we'll color code these here. Um, when I say derivative of the first, I mean 2x, that's der derivative of x squared, uh, times the second. Notice no derivative was taken, so 2x sine x plus the first. So notice I just copied the first. I didn't uh, actually differentiate the first. I just copied the first times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So this whole thing would be the derivative of f. Now let's also not forget, uh, this is very important, what does the derivative mean? Uh, we get into the habit of doing all these rules and learning the shortcuts, but never let's never forget the meaning of the derivative. Um, this is a function. It has a graph, uh, which we won't graph, but it has a graph. And that graph has a slope at uh, different x values. If you give it an x value, there should be a certain slope to the curve there. Well, this derivative's job is if you provide it with an x value and you plug it in here, if you plug it into the derivative, the number that you get out will be the slope of the original function at that x value. So that's that's what derivatives mean. Let's practice one more. Here's another one. g of t equals sine 2t. Now you look at that and you, you first of all say, well, well, Devin, that doesn't look like a product. And, and you absolutely can't say it's sine times 2t. This is not times. It's sine of t. Uh, sine is being applied to the uh, expression 2t. So th this isn't a product rule. Now there is a product here, but that, that doesn't really matter um, because it's inside the sign, first of all. And second of all, 2 is a multiple of t. It's not, not a true product. Normally when we say product rule, we mean a function of one variable times a function of another variable. So what do we do? Well, if you've looked ahead at some later videos, the most applicable rule for this one is actually something called the chain rule. Now, we're going to assume that we don't know the chain rule at this moment in time. So if, um, if we don't know the chain rule uh, and, and we want to use one of our either our basic rules or this new product rule, uh, uh, something we have to do all the time is rewrite this in a nicer way. So, for instance, I would want to rewrite sine 2t uh, using a trig identity. Now, hopefully we know our trig identities, and this is sine 2t is equivalent to 2 sine t cosine t. Trig identities are a big deal. A lot of um, pre-cal and trig instructors will glaze over trig identities and, or say, oh, you don't need to know these, or oh, here's a table, or you can use this on a test. But um, to be honest with you, that'll really penalize you when you get to Calc 1 and Calc 2. And maybe some of you guys 
are already experiencing that. So take some time to uh, go either Google uh, trig identities or look them up in your textbook and commit to memory some of the more important trig identities. And uh, and this would be this would definitely be one of them. So two sine t cosine t. Now why did I do that? This isn't the derivative. I simply rewrote g. Well now I wrote sine two t, which had composition as a function of just t. So now it's back to my basic rules. With one exception, uh, there's a product. That's why I put this example in here. So let's take it slow. The derivative of the first would be 2 cosine t times the second, that's cosine t, um, plus the first, that's 2 sine t, times the derivative of the second derivative of cosine is minus sine t. Alright, we can clean that up a little bit. Um, we can pull out a common factor of 2. So we'd have 2 cosine squared t minus sine squared t. So if we know our trig identities, this should look familiar to us. We have 2, and the expression in the brackets here is cosine 2t. Uh, now, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, if we used the chain rule, this would have been a shorter problem. We could have skipped uh, like the middle step or, or two here and gotten directly to this answer. But it's still a good exercise to practice manipulating expressions using trig identities and then differentiating them uh, different ways. So this will be our final answer. This will be g prime of t. And uh, we did this derivative using the product rule. So there's a couple examples just to get you started. And I hope that uh, makes the product rule a little bit more understandable. And uh, next, we'll move on to the quotient rule.